Hello, in this video, we're going to talk about inflammatory myopathies or myositis. These are autoimmune diseases characterized by inflammation of the muscle, leading to muscle weakness and atrophy. The two most commonly recognized types are dermatomyositis and polymyositis. These typically present with proximal muscle weakness involving the shoulders and the hips. The difference between the two is that dermatomyositis also have skin changes, hence derm, as in dermatology, the skin. Let's recap the function and the anatomy of the muscle. Muscle is a specialized tissue found in animals designed to generate force and motion. If we were to pull the muscle itself, it's composed of different structures, but essentially the muscle tissue is composed of muscle cells called muscle fibers, which are elongated and designed to contract in response to stimulation. These fibers are made up of smaller units called myofibrils, which in turn are composed of even smaller structures called sarcomeres. The sarcomere is the functional unit of the muscle fibers and is responsible for muscle contraction. Here we are looking at normal muscle tissue and we can find blood vessels supplying it. When you have inflammation of the muscle tissue, this is termed myositis. And again, there are many causes of inflamed muscle tissue. There could be infective causes, there could be traumatic causes, but we are mainly focusing on autoimmune causes, which are broadly referred to as inflammatory myopathies. Now, typically, inflammatory myopathies present with proximal muscle weakness, affecting the quadriceps and shoulders and biceps. Historically, dermatomyositis and polymyositis were the primary types of inflammatory myopathies. However, six distinct types have now been identified. Dermatomyositis, polymyositis, antisynthetase syndrome, overlap myositis, immune-mediated necrotizing myopathy, and inclusion body myositis. Each of these have their own unique features. Common among these conditions is that you get an elevated creatinine kinase, a muscle enzyme released into the bloodstream during muscle inflammation. But you also get other elevated enzymes, which are your AST and ALT, which are typically known as your liver enzymes, but these guys can also be found in muscles. Other diagnostic tests include an MRI, MRI of the muscle specifically, to help detect inflammation, which will show as muscle edema. The scans from the MRI can be used to help perform a muscle biopsy, which is the gold standard for diagnosing and also differentiating between the different types. The presence of autoantibodies in the blood is another key diagnostic marker and helps support the diagnosis and differentiate between the different inflammatory myositis. Let us now talk about the six different types of inflammatory myopathies. Again, each of them present with proximal muscle weakness, typically involving the shoulders and the thighs. However, each of them have their own unique features. The muscle weakness in itself usually has a history of difficulty getting up the chair without support and climbing upstairs. Again, you have the historical classification of polymyositis and dermatomyositis. Let's focus on dermatomyositis, which presents with proximal muscle weakness with skin changes. There are distinct rashes, which include heliotrope rash, which is purple or red rash on the eyelids, Gotrans papules, red patches over the knuckles, elbows and knees, photosensitive rash, which include the shawl sign over the back and V sign over the chest, as well as nail changes, which include redness, erythema. People with dermatomyositis typically have positive antibodies, and there are many. Most important one to remember are TIF1 gamma and NXP2, which are dermatomyositis specific antibodies associated with malignancy. Polymyositis is the other side of the spectrum, again presenting with proximal, symmetrical muscle weakness involving the shoulders, hips, thighs, and even neck. 
but importantly, there is no rash. Patients are often seronegative, meaning that they don't have any muscle-associated antibody. Now going to the right side of this image where the skin rash is, we can identify two other types of autoimmune inflammatory myopathies. The first being antisynthetase syndrome, which is a unique syndrome in that they present with a number of things. Proximal muscle weakness, they can have inflammatory arthritis, Raynaud's phenomenon, which is discoloration of the fingers, especially during the cold weather, something called mechanics hand, which are roughening of the essentially palmar aspect of the hand, and interstitial lung disease. Antisynthase syndrome can also have features of dermatomyositis within it. There are specific antisynthase syndrome antibodies. JO1 is the most common. The other type of inflammatory myopathy that I'm putting on the right side here is overlap myositis because it is also associated with skin changes such as those seen in dermatomyositis. But people who have overlap myositis usually have an underlying autoimmune disease such as Sjogren's, lupus, or scleroderma with, again, unique antibodies such as PM-SCL, Rho-52, Anti-Q, and U1-RMP. The next type of inflammatory myositis is immune-mediated necrotizing myopathy, which I put on the left side here because it is not associated with the rash. It again presents with proximal muscle weakness and hamstring involvement is particularly affected. It is common in females and is very much associated with statin use, a lipid-lowering agent, which is an HMG-CoA reductase inhibitor. Interestingly enough, Patients with immune-mediated necrotizing myopathy may have, associated with statin use, develop HMG-CoA reductase auto antibodies. The last type of inflammatory myositis is inclusion body myositis. In this group, there is no dermatomyositis, there's no rash, but interestingly, people have often sudden onset disease with not only proximal muscle weakness, but distal muscle weakness particularly in the finger flexors, which is not as common in other types. Very frequently, inclusion body myositis is associated with dysphagia, difficulty swallowing. Inclusion body myositis is more common in men, those above 50. There is usually normal or slightly elevated creatinine kinase. Treatment of all these inflammatory myopathies or myositis include immunosuppression in the form of corticosteroids followed by intravenous immunoglobulins or other immunosuppressants. Interestingly, inclusion body myositis in particular is a type that does not respond to immunosuppression. Another final important point is that muscles also help with breathing and swallowing. So in these inflammatory myositis conditions, it can also cause poor respiratory effort, difficulty breathing, and dysphagia, difficulty swallowing. So in summary, inflammatory myositis is a group of autoimmune conditions whereby the muscles become inflamed. This leads to a rise in creatinine kinase and AST and ALT. Inflammatory myositis now can be divided into six phenotypes, dermatomyositis, polymyositis, antisynthetase syndrome, overlap myositis, necrotizing autoimmune myopathy, and inclusion body myositis. Thank you for watching.